it's interesting that the Ukrainians have probably been trying to do this for for many, many months at this point to strike out at a critical strategic target, not from a military standpoint. This isn't going to win, win the war, but from a messaging standpoint that Russia uh, can't just go on um, attacking Ukrainian cities and uh, not suffer uh, some sort of blowback or some sort of consequence. This notion of the Kremlin uh, as, the, as a fortress, I mean, that's what it is. It's a fortress. Uh, now being subject to air attacks uh, is something that's going to be difficult for, for the Russian establishment to kind of explain. Uh, so now there's a conversation around whether this was staged to, uh, as a pretext to then kind of lash out at Ukraine, uh, demonstrate that Ukraine's kind of a terrorist state. I think that's a bit far-fetched. You're undermining the kind of the criticality of, uh, of demonstrating Russia as a, you know, secure, powerful state for some unclear message, some unclear pretext to then lash out at the Ukrainians when, frank and frank frankly, the Russians don't have much more they can do. I mean, it's not like now they can, they can escalate to attacking Ukrainian cities or peaceful populations. They're already doing that. It is technically possible. Ukraine has several types of drones that can fit the profile. For example, it's a newly developed UJ-22 drone can actually fly the distance. It's a, it's a commercial drone that they acquired uh, from China, uh, it's Mugin 5 um, cargo drone, which can be basically purchased online and could be refitted into a military drone. Uh, that drone can fly several hundred kilometers and it was used in previous attacks. The fact that if it was in fact a Ukrainian drone, uh, that was able to penetrate all the way into the Kremlin speaks volumes about the strengths and the gaps and the problems within the air defense and electronic warfare defenses if in fact uh, they fail to stop this drone. So it could be a symbolic strike into the heart of Moscow to demonstrate that basically no part of European Russia is safe from a Ukrainian attack and obviously attack on Kremlin has a lot of symbolism considering that on May 9th Russia is supposed to hold a massive victory day parade there. Uh, it could have been a, an operation by non-military actors, um, someone uh, basically anti-Russian, but not necessarily with the blessing of, um, of the Ukrainian government. And of course, attacks of this kind, if they are in fact carried by Ukrainian military, are meant to keep the Russian military off balance by forcing them to reallocate and rededicate uh, air defense resources to specific places like Moscow, probably at the expense of other regions, including, for example, Russian military inside uh, Ukraine proper that has to have enough um, air defense and electronic warfare protection.